Welcome to Civil Courtify. Download the Android app and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to get instant access for all the videos. Also follow us on Facebook as well as Telegram. In this video, we'll be looking at 50 geographical terms important for any exam. This series has 5 parts with 10 important terms in each video. This is part 2 and the links for the other parts are available in the comments and description below. Alright, let's begin. Number 11. Gorge. A gorge is a narrow valley with steep, rocky walls located between hills or mountains. The most common reason for the formation of a gorge is erosion due to streams or rivers. Now streams carve through hard layers of rock, breaking down or eroding it. The sediment from the worn away rock is then carried downstream. Over time, this erosion will form the steep walls of a gorge. The Himalayas are well known for their deep gorges, with the world's deepest gorge at Kali Gandaki in Nepal. Number 12. Enclaves and Exclaves An enclave is a territory or a part of a territory that is entirely surrounded by the territory of another state. Now there are only three nations in the entire world that are completely surrounded by another country. The first one is the Republic of San Marino, enclaved within Italy. The second one is the Vatican City, enclaved within the city of Rome in Italy. The third one is the Kingdom of Lesotho, enclaved within South Africa. An exclave is a portion of a state or territory geographically separated from the main part by surrounding alien territory of one or more states. Number 13. Easterlies and Westerlies Wind is the flow of air from high pressure to low pressure region. Now let us look at Easterlies first. At the equator, air rises up creating a low pressure and cold air from higher latitudes rushes to fill up the space. Air rising at the equator sinks at subtropical region 30 degree north and south in both hemispheres, thereby creating a circulation of surface air towards the equator. The circulation encounters the Coriolis force caused by the rotation of the earth. The result is that between 30 degree north latitude and 30 degree south latitude, winds usually blow from the east towards the west. This wind is usually called the trade winds or easterlies. In northern hemisphere, it is called northeasterly trade winds, whereas in the southern hemisphere, it is called southeasterly trade winds. Next is westerlies. The westerlies or the anti trades or prevailing westerlies are winds from the west towards the east in the middle latitudes between 30 and 60 degrees. They originate from the high pressure areas in the horse latitudes and tend towards the poles and steer extra tropical cyclones in this general manner. These winds are predominantly from the southwest in the northern hemisphere and from the northwest in the southern hemisphere. Number 14. International Date Line The International Date Line established in 1884 passes through the mid-Pacific Ocean and roughly follows the 180 degrees longitude north-south line on the earth. It is located halfway around the world from the prime meridian which is 0 degrees longitude established in Greenwich, England in 1852. The International Date Line functions as a line of demarcation separating two consecutive calendar dates. When you cross the date line, you become a time traveler of sorts. Cross to the west and it's one day later, cross back and you've gone back in time. Despite its name, the International Date Line has no legal international status and countries are free to choose the dates that they observe. While the date line generally runs north to south from pole to pole, it zigzags around political borders such as Eastern Russia and Alaska's Aleutian Islands. Number 15. Bay, Gulf and Cape A bay is a recessed coastal body of water that directly connects to a larger main body of water such as an ocean, lake or another bay. A gulf is a large bay that is an arm of an ocean or a sea. Whereas a cape is a headland or a promontory of large size extending into a body of water, usually the sea. A cape usually represents a marked change in the trend of the coastline. Their proximity to the coastline makes them prone to natural forms of erosion, mainly tidal actions. This results in capes having a relatively short geological span. Capes can be formed by glaciers, volcanoes and changes in sea level. Erosion plays a large role in each of these methods of formation. Number 16. Lagoon and Creek Lagoons are shallow, often elongated bodies of water separated from a larger body of water by a shallow or exposed shoal, coral reef or similar feature. 
A creek is a narrow, sheltered waterway, especially an inlet in a shoreline or channel in a marsh. In India, two famous creeks are the Sar Creek and Kori Creek in Gujarat. Number 17. Air Mass In meteorology, an air mass is a volume of air defined by its temperature and water vapor content. Air masses cover many hundreds or thousands of square miles and adapt to the characteristics of the surface below them. They are classified according to latitude and their continental or maritime source regions. Colder air masses are termed polar or arctic, while warmer air masses are deemed tropical. Continental and superior air masses are dry, while maritime and monsoon air masses are moist. Weather fronts separate air masses with different density, temperature or moisture characteristics. Number 18. Dry Farming Dry farming or dryland farming is an agricultural technique for non-irrigated cultivation of crops whereby maximum amount of water is conserved by soil and water management. Dryland farming is associated with drylands which are dry areas characterized by a cool wet season followed by a warm dry season. Principal areas of dry farming in India are the Indo-Gangetic Plains of North India, the Trapian Plateau of Peninsular India and the Plateau of Granite Formation. Number 19 Fly ash. Fly ash is a coal combustion product composed of fine particles that are driven out of the boiler with the flue gases. Fly ash includes substantial amount of silicon dioxide, aluminium oxide and calcium oxide. It is reused in making bricks, concrete and embankments. Number 20. Emergent and Submergent Coastlines An emergent coastline is a stretch along the coast that has been exposed by the sea by a relative fall in sea levels. Submergent coastlines are stretches along the coast that have been inundated by the sea by relative rise in sea levels. So this is it for this video. The PDF notes for this video are available on the Civil Coursify Android app for free. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, download the Civil Coursify Android app and follow us on Facebook and Telegram. Links are available in the description as well as comment section. Till then, thank you and take care.